People who make it their business to worry about proliferation full time, as far as I can tell, think the odds are 50-50 that a nuke is going to go off in American city sometime in, in the next 10 years. That's really terrifying. Uh, it's also terrifying how little of our attentional and emotional and, and economic resources we're spending on trying to contain that problem. My name is Sam Harris. I'm a writer and a neuroscientist and also uh, one of the founders of The Reason Project, which is a nonprofit uh, purpose towards spreading secularism and scientific thinking in society. We should be talking about real problems like nuclear proliferation and, and genocide and poverty and the crisis in education. I mean, these are, these are issues which, which, are, which tremendous swings in human well-being depend on. And, uh, that's, it's, it's not at the, at the center of our moral concern. We talk about morality uh, in ways that, that, that are uncoupled from real questions of human and animal suffering. So that we, and, the, and this is the influence of religion. Religion has convinced us that there's something else entirely other than concerns about suffering. There's concerns about what God wants. There's concerns about what's going to happen in the afterlife. Uh, and therefore, we talk about things like gay marriage as though it's the greatest problem of the 21st century. Uh, we even have a liberal president who's uh, ostensibly against gay marriage because it's, his faith tells him uh, it's an abomination. Um, it's completely insane. Well, it, it, it uh, convinces people that they should pretend to know things they don't know. And it gives them bad answers to the most important questions. And when someone pretends to be certain about something they obviously can't be certain about, that person is not trusted and not given a position of authority and just, it's, it's, it's unseemly. And yet, the moment you shift the conversation to God and the, the, mor the moral structure of the universe as, as decreed by religion, uh, then all of a sudden all bets are off. You can, you can pretend to know things you absolutely uh, and obviously cannot know. Uh, and what's worse is you, these are mutually incompatible certainties. I mean, there's, just, there's no way to reconcile Islam with Christianity. This difference of opinion admits of compromise about as much as a coin toss does because, to take only one example, uh, if you're a Christian uh, of any serious conviction, you have to believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ. Well, it says in two places in, in the Quran that if you believe that Christ was divine, you will go to hell. Uh, so, you know, there is no compromise there. I mean, either Jesus was divine or he wasn't. And we have a world that has been shattered by these competing uh, certainties. And we're lying to ourselves about the causes of this shattering. We have people who are saying, well, it's not really religion, it's politics. Well, it's, it's only politics because it's religion first. The, the irony actually is that, that, that we actually agree much more about morality than, than anyone lets on. The issue is we, have, we do have whole cultures and subcultures that have, based largely on religious conviction, very distorted notions of how uh, human beings can flourish. I mean, we have people who uh, think you should throw acid in the battery acid in the faces of little girls for trying to learn to read in Afghanistan. And so clearly, that there 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 are real world correlates of that kind of thinking, that kind of orientation. And uh, you know, it's not our job to to not judge it and say, well, to each his own, everyone, you know, everyone has, their, has to work out their own strategy for, for human fulfillment. It's just, it's just not true. There's, there are people who are wrong about human fulfillment.